Hello, I'm Hingers, and welcome to Good Game Well Played, your weekly guide to all things esports. This week on the show, we're going to chat to a real live shoutcaster and give you a beginner's guide on how to get into the biggest esport on the planet. But first, let's take a look at the big news stories of the week. In reboot news, Nintendo have announced that the Nintendo World Championships will be returning after a 25-year hiatus. Held once in 1990 and then never again, the Nintendo World Championships were loosely based on the 1989 film The Wizard and involved mini-games of Super Mario Bros., Rad Racer and Tetris. There is no word on what the 2015 version will look like or what games will be involved. However, in a video released last week, Nintendo did show a training montage of Chief Operating Officer Reggie fils eating bananas and lifting game cubes. When you're training for tomorrow, there's no time to rest. Qualifiers for the Nintendo World Championships begin May 30. However, so far, in classic American style, it appears they will only be run in the US. The finals of these World Championships will take place at E3 in June. And in League of Legends news, last week Chinese giants Edward Gaming won the mid-season Invitational in Tallahassee, Florida. They beat out Koreans SK Telecom T1 who had dominated the group stage 5-0. The Chinese team went up 2-1 in the best of five before SKT T1 dramatically subbed mid laner Easy Hoon out for Faker, who helped the Koreans claw back a win in the fourth game. After a poor pick and ban phase from SKT T1, EDG went on to win the final game and the series 3-2 to take home the $100,000 first place prize. And finally, Blizzard have announced a world championship for their MOBA Heroes of the Storm. Currently still in beta, Heroes is slated for release in early June and the $1.2 million league will begin shortly after that. Australians wishing to compete will have to qualify it through the American Championship to get to the finals, which will take place at BlizzCon in November. All right, that is it for the news. Now, let's chat champions. He is a current shoutcaster for one of the most popular esports in the world. His Twitter bio describes him as formerly known as Slappy Baggins, and he is a man who I have it on good authority doesn't always wear pants when he's behind the casting desk. It is our great pleasure to welcome to Good Game Well Played, Max Atlas Anderson. Well, Max, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So, how did you get into shoutcasting? You're a shoutcaster. Were you always into shoutcasting? Um, I wasn't always into shoutcasting. I was most definitely always into League of Legends. That was <laughs> sort of my shtick, and I wasn't very good at it, right? So, <laughs> basically, I wanted some way to express my love for League of Legends in a way that's sort of tangible, and um, I got to shoutcasting. I love talking a whole lot, so <laughs> that sort of suited me quite well. So how do you even start doing that kind of thing? Well, actually, um, my, my partner at the time, she was considering it because there is sort of there are opportunities to get into it here in um, in Australia. I didn't actually know anything about it, but she sort of found someone, and I thought, man, this looks awesome. And so I, I contacted them, got myself a tryout. They said, yeah, you seem all right. And I, I started working for them. Wait, it was wait. this tiny you, little company. Did you snake your partner's job? Like she was going for a job and then you snaked it? Is that what happened? Look, I probably wouldn't say it like that because she also got a job. Okay? Right, it's it's okay. not, let's, <laughs> let's take that off the table. Thank you. So what oh kind of goodness. qualities make a good shoutcaster then? Uh, generally, being able to project your voice is fantastic. Also, oh, yeah. fluency. Being able to talk. Yeah. Being able to talk is generally good, but <laughs> you have to have some basic knowledge of the game and you need to know almost every champion's ability names <laughs> and their name and every single item in the game as well. Yeah. So if you were a young nerd trying to get into this kind of thing now, how, what, what, would you, what steps would you take to get into it? Pretty much the way to get into shoutcasting is to do it for as long as possible. Try and find your way into any open ladder tournaments that you can. There's heaps of them going on. That's actually the doorway into the OCS, which is then the doorway into the OPL here mm -hmm. in Oceania. So that is the best way to do it. And there are heaps of opportunities because we need shoutcasters. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be here forever. Uh, all right, let's talk about League of Legends. So let's do a quick rundown of the game. How does this kind of game work? It's a MOBA, it's a yep. 5v5. I like to um, use the basketball analogy. Right. So pretty much you're on a team and you're trying to score together, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not necessarily dribbling and passing because you're just trying to kill the opponent. <laughs> in order to get to their nexus and explode that. And uh, you need to d destroy a path towards the nexus. So that is a minimum That's like you're of, at his base. Yeah. 
So you're heading over there, you've got your team, uh, but there are, like in basketball, there'd be different roles you're playing, right? Yeah. So what are the five different roles you'd be playing in a team? Yeah, so the, the, the first role would be the top lane, mm -hmm. which can be a whole multitude of different options, but generally it's your tanky bruiser that's up there that's trying to soak damage for the team. And they're generally on a bit of an island there in the top lane, so just fighting one, one another 1v1, waiting for the jungler, who is the next uh, position that we're going to talk about, to come in. So the jungler roams around the map taking jungle camps, so on either side there is a jungle for each team basically. So what you then do is you have a jungler who just kills those little camps, he levels up on his own, he's completely unseen by the enemy team unless they've got vision of him. And then you try and gank your lane. So basically you're entering a lane unbeknownst to the opponent and trying to make it sort of an odds in your favor situation where you've got a man advantage. So you've got, you've got your, your top lane, you've got your jungler. What's yeah. next? Then you've got the mid lane, surprisingly. We're, we're heading down the map, ladies and gentlemen. There are three lanes. The middle lane is what comes next, and that's generally sort of an, a mage type champion or an assassin. You can have a, an attack damage carry in there as well, so a long range champion. You can have, it's a very versatile lane. And is that where you're putting your best player? Because they're in the middle, or no? No, not necessarily. You can have your best player in any role. Um, often you'll see a lot of the attack damage carry, which is actually in the bottom lane, mm -hmm. they're often considered the best because in the late game, they're the ones that get all the kills. Okay, so three, what's the fourth one? Yeah, so that would be the bottom lane. So okay. that's where we got to just then. So there are actually four champions in the bottom lane generally, two for each team. Right. And it is going to be attack damage carry, carry which is a marksman, which basically shoots from range, pretty okay. much. That, that is gonna, gonna be your consistent damage source, basically. They are all about DPS, whereas your mid laner, for instance, is about burst damage, is about 100%ing someone. Is That's only four term. people though, so what's yeah. the fifth? The fifth is the support. And so they're down there trying to assist their AD carry. AD carries are very weak in the early stages of the game. They need help, they need babysitting. They're basically just sitting there trying to assist and they don't get a whole lot of gold and their job is largely around getting vision control around the map because everywhere else is dark unless your champion's there mm -hmm. until you put down vision, which are wards. So if I'm watching a League of Legends game and I don't really know what's going on, but there are a lot of numbers that are ticking up on the screen, what am I looking for? Like what are the metrics to uh, to decide who is winning this game? Um, generally, if, if you want a layman's term of who's winning, you can have a look at the top of the Spectre client, which has gold. Right, okay. So whoever's accrued the most money, because you earn money from killing one another and from picking up objectives across the map, generally that's a decent way of deciding who or uh, who is ahead. Right. You can have a look at the dragon counter as well. It's mm -hmm. actually getting killed right in the background right now. <laughs> yeah, that little guy. So that's me, he, that is me soloing a dragon. That's what that oh, is. You are doing well, my friend. Thank Your you. Your rod of ages. Your build's actually working out quite well. Thank you. Not too bad. I'm impressed. But no, one, every time you kill a dragon, you get a specific buff. So for the first one, you get 6% extra statistics. Mm -hmm. And for the second one, you get pushing power, which is killing turrets. The third one, you get a movement speed boost. The fourth one, you get to kill minions faster. And the fifth one doubles everything else and makes you do bonus damage on auto attack and it's super better. Mm -hmm. And yep. you can actually shut out your opponent. So if you've got a fantastic team that sort of fights together and you can group around the dragon and make sure that your opponent, who may not necessarily have a group fighting team like that, make sure that they can't get it, then you can get to that fifth dragon at an earlier stage. That can be a win condition for your team. Right. What then may happen is that the opposing team, they might have a better pushing comp. So what they've done is they've decided to take all your turrets very early on, ignore the dragon, and that's their key to victory. So what are some broad types of strategies that different teams are implementing right now in the meta? We've sort of got into this sort of tanky meta. There's a new item that's come through for the jungle, which is called a Cinder Hulk, which has opened up a whole lot of really tanky junglers. So you've got super tanks heading around the map, which means you've got hyper carries as well. So carry 80 carries that generally want to be shredding down high health targets, high armor targets, mm -hmm. the likes of uh, Cogmore and Vayne, if anyone has any idea about who these champions are. So. Um, that's very exciting because you get to watch these players that are playing these hyper carries with so much weight on their back, really having to play super hard in order to win. So what is something a novice should look to to say to sound smart when they're watching a LOL game with their friends? Uh, well, my favourite thing, because yep. honestly, I, do, I just like to come out with things like that, is are they going to be taking dragons soon? <laughs> that is my favorite question to ask a color caster. And I know it's not necessarily something that I say because I actually try and phrase everything as a question, but yeah, they should be taking dragon. That should be something that they should be right, looking at. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about like professional esports in LOL as well. What is the big tournament in LOL right now? The big tournament is Worlds. Mm -hmm. So that is the world final. Last year it was held in Korea and was absolutely massive. 
It was the biggest um, league event that we have seen so far. It gets bigger and bigger. It was in the Staples Centre the year before that. It was absolutely wow. amazing. How would an Australian team go about getting to Worlds? Well, you need to participate in the OPL. So. Mm -hmm. I, I did mention just which briefly is the Oceania before. Yeah, that is Pro the Oceanic League. Pro League, yep. which um, I'm actually commentating, mm -hmm. uh, along with my friend Pastry Time, and of course, uh, Papa Smithy and Spawn as well. So the OPL is sort of your direct way of getting there. It's not necessarily that direct, because you have to go through a whole lot of rigorous testing via the international wildcard events that are happening as well. So mm -hmm. we recently had one of those in order to get over to MSI. And um, the International Wildcard Invitational happened as well. And we, we had the pleasure of being able to shoutcast that. It was um, held in Istanbul, which was super exciting because the Turkish fans are absolutely insane. They have more people that watch League of Legends than play the game. Wow. Yeah. So um, super exciting, really passionate fans. So it was really cool to be able to see the fan reactions when Turkey actually managed to win the event. Uh, what are the big narratives happening this year in the OPL then? Uh, well, it's all about the Chiefs at the moment, to be honest, because they're, they're the team that we sent to the International Wildcard Invitational and they kind of choked just a little bit while they were over there. Classic Australians. Yeah, it's just what happens. And it's often to do with the Turkish as well. Turkish seem to be the, the team that always gets us out of the running. Who else is playing this wildcard event? It's the Australians, it's the Turks, it's the... Who else is there? Yeah, so there's the... Oceanic representative, which is mm -hmm. from the OPL, but then you've got Turkish, you've got Brazil there as well, you've got Latin America, you've got also the CIS region over from Russia at the same time. Japan is now involved at the same time, so there's a whole lot of teams competing, vying for a spot. Where can people find out more about League of Legends stuff? There's a whole lot of League of Legends stuff that you can find <laughs> on the internet. I promise you, if you have a Google search engine, you will be fine. <laughs> Great, thanks. Come back anytime. No worries, thanks for having me. <laughs> and finally, to local events. Last week, we asked viewers to get in touch with us if they were putting on an esports event in Australia, and we picked out a few to plug. After watching the Smash Community Spotlight, Twitter user Zyji Romp got in touch with us to let us know about a Super Smash Bros. 4 tournament he and his friends run every Friday at EB Games in Swanson Street, Melbourne. It's open to everyone. Sign-ups cut off at 4pm each Friday, and you can find details at their Facebook group, Swanston Street Smash Crew. Also, the Australian Cyber League hit us up to let us know about the ACL Pro Brisbane, a live esports event taking place over the 30th and 31st of May at The Edge in Southbank. It's a 15 plus event across the weekend and will feature COD Advanced Warfare and Halo 2 4v4 events. Spectating is free and you can find out more details at aclpro.com.au. If you're running a community event and you'd like us to plug it, or maybe you're part of an interesting esports scene you'd like us to cover, get in contact with us via Facebook or Twitter and we'll try and pick out a few to give shout outs to each week. That's it for this week. My name's Hingers. Until next time, GGWP, and we'll leave you with Max Atlas Anderson's favourite moment in LOL history. See ya! I'm like, even though I only have a mat on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Faker, maybe in trouble here, Death Mark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Faker, what was that? Faker with a huge what? play, the QSS. I can't believe I just saw he that. He actually won that duel. I can't as believe SK that happened. SK Telecom I'm just charges mind. into the KT Bullets base. Oh, wow. Can you say GG?